This the samurai? You can call me Lord Sakai. <gasps> Forgive me, my lord. Kenji. He's a farmer and appears to be one of, if not the most well-known sake brewer across all of the island of Tsushima. Kenji's story is one that sugarcoats the life of a swindler, kind of the worst of the worst, the kind that would take advantage of the people that are feeling the worst parts of the effects of warfare. Kenji himself, I think, can be described as a good character with great intentions, but his most horrible habits continuously get in his way, causing problems for himself, where he would then enlist the help of someone else to help him, and that would only create a bigger and bigger problem. And so eventually, Jin would have to come to his rescue and save him from the grave that he's digging for himself. While Kenji's only present in two missions, at least where he's a contributing factor, his business and how he conducts said business is a major point of his side stories. As a matter of fact, Jin's introduction to Kenji really centered around his business to begin with. It was also here where he discovered Kenji's been selling sake to the Mongols since they first invaded Tsushima. Conducting business with the enemy understandably upset Jin, but it was something he let slide as there was a much more pressing matter to deal with, specifically saving Taka from captivity. And since Kenji softened the blow of working with the enemy as allowing him to keep his head, all was forgiven. The people of Tsushima were basically defenseless in the wake of the Mongol invasion, and so if you have to do what you gotta do in order to survive, so be it. But as the story end, as the legend of the ghost pervaded all around Tsushima and Jin inspired those around him to be more useful in the fight for the island, Jin would make it a point to be quote unquote useful. And this was something Kenji would indeed do, but he would do it in the most peculiar way. He would help the people of Tsushima by way of his business skills. And where better to begin than a village in the south of the island who have been starving. The Mongols have taken all our food, rice, millet, fish, anything they can lay hands on. We're starving. You say we. This isn't your farm. I have been thinking about what you said, and I'm trying to help the farmers here. Kenji would gravitate to this area in answer of the farmer's plight. The Mongols were demanding food to which the farmers could not spare. And so Kenji came up with a plan. Instead of giving the Mongols real food, food that they would indeed pay Kenji for, he would instead give them straw and wood chips. And being satisfied with successfully conning the Mongols, Kenji would then turn around and skim a little bit of the real food from the village for himself. It's a win-win-win. In other words, Kenji made money, by tricking the Mongols into buying fake food, he saved the village's real food, and then he turned around and took some of that food for himself. It was perfect until the Mongols almost immediately discovered what he did. This resulted in them almost immediately returning, taking all the real food, along with some hostages and Kenji's personal horse. When Jin does eventually come along, Kenji would ask for his help, but he would paint it in the most selfless of light. It's not until the hostages are freed that the full story is shared. Jin would react angrily to Kenji, as he did put an entire village in danger, but Kenji would just ask for forgiveness. He could do good, he just needs practice. And Jin would calm down and he would tell him to practice when people's lives aren't threatened. While there was some selfish acts, such as keeping the profits for himself and even skimming a little food off the top for just him, arguably his intentions still were somewhat noble even if a little destructive as he did put everyone's life in jeopardy. It's a lot worse than what he does later on in Yadagawa, where he only puts two lives in danger, Jin relying to him again and his partner. After some time passes, Kenji would be found waiting at a crossroad in old Yadagawa. He happily tells Jin there's an empty Mongol camp not too far from here filled with food, medicine, and supplies for the refugees of Yadagawa. The camp is empty. The Mongol warriors leave it undefended whenever they go on raids. The two of them just have to hurry. Suspicious of what Kenji was even doing, waiting at the crossroads to begin with, it's not until he loots the camp with Kenji that he discovers Kenji's partner is being held prisoner in the camp. Kenji left them when a deal for the supplies with the Mongols went south, and it wasn't the two of them that were paying for the supplies from the Mongols. They were trying to sell it to the Mongols, and they got the supplies from some straw hats that they robbed. As Jin is being filled in on the details, the Mongols would return to camp, and so too were the straw hats that the pair originally robbed. This left Jin to fight both factions alone, while Kenji and his partner accidentally locked themselves in a bamboo cage, thinking it'd be safer in there. Livid at the actions of these two, Jin would set them free, and he would decide to let them slide, so long as the supplies that they took go to the refugees of Yadakawa, and they're not to earn a single penny off of any of the medicine, clothes, or food. 
The pair reluctantly or rather suspiciously agree. The last of Kenji's tales on Tsushima appear to at least start off more noble than the two before. A bandit by the name Gon, the butcher is aiming to kill Kenji for suckering him. As he's done so many times, not only to Gon, as Kenji would later reveal that he's cheated Gon three times, this is the third time. The first time he owed another bandit by the name of Red Hand Taro for misplaced merchandise to which he would overprice cheap sake that he would sell to Gon and use that little extra money that he earned to repay Red Hand Taro. With the first transaction going so well, Kenji attempted to do it a second time where Gon realized the cheap sake was garbage. And instead of paying the price, Kenji would turn around and blame Red Hand Taro for the bad sake Gon received, resulting in Gon killing Red Hand Taro. This third and final time Gon realized Kenji cheated him, it was for more of a noble cause. Gon had paid for delivery of sake and medicine. Kenji would take some of these prepaid supplies and use them to help some refugees of Izuhara. Jin would recognize the good intentions behind this effort despite Kenji being crooked as all hell once more and it's because of the good intentions that Jin would follow Kenji to his meeting with Gon the Butcher and make sure everything went smoothly. And it truly was Kenji just repaying the money back to Gon that he owed him for the supplies that he skimmed. This was of course a setup, it was really just meant for a god and a handful of bandits waiting in the bushes to attack Kenji when the moment was right. Which, I gotta just point out, the moment where Kenji starts shouting the safe word for Jin to come out and attack Gon to save Kenji's life has to be one of the most unexpected, hilarious moments because Kenji's just shouting at the top of his lungs. I'm so happy to see you! He knows! I'm so happy to see you! What's crazy is despite Kenji admitting to having another person killed by lying about something he did and lying to Jin back in Yadakawa, tricking him to save the partner he left behind, something he would kind of repeat back in Izuhara by pretending to send Jin to rescue some hostages that he just casually wants to help out when in reality he was the one that caused the problems for the entire farming village that then had to deal with the aftermath. Despite all of this, Jin would just end the tale with telling Kenji he has a gift. He helped with the rescue of Taka and contributed to so much of the island. He has some heroic moments and he shouldn't be pissing it away by continuing to get involved with bandits or cheating people. Despite Kenji needing money, food, and supplies to get by, there's other ways to do it. It makes me wonder if Jin would have been so lenient on anyone else. If he sees something in Kenji that no one else does or Kenji's close ties to Yuna and the contributions that he did make during the main story help Jin just see the good in him. Kenji's clearly someone that is a bit much to deal with as Jin constantly questions what he did now or what scheme does he have up his sleeve. He definitely has a series of tales that question whether if he really is a good character that just falls into bad habits and while his intentions are good because he only knows a certain way of doing things or how to get by, that's the filter he funnels ideas and problem solving skills through, he creates a mess and for one reason or another, whether it be shame or a history that taught him to just not come clean, he would come up with some type of modest idea, pitch it to Jin, and then have Jin be the sucker to go save whatever problem he created. Thankfully there's one more tale when it comes to Kenji, and that is the ghost of Iki. Alright. You? Lord Sakai, get me out of here! You're pretending to be the ghost. A respectful tribute. <laughs> well, Jin is out on Iki Island, there's rumors of the ghost of Iki. This own deity takes donations of sake and millet. Everyone on the island is seemingly hunting this ghost as he's managed to steal and lie to everyone that he could. Jin, with some skilled investigative work, would discover the ghost of Iki is none other than Kenji. Overwhelmed by the Mongol presence on Tsushima, Kenji was attempting to stow away on a boat to the mainland of Japan. And because of his colorful character, he has, in the short amount of time on the island, managed to either cause debts or incite anger with the locals that could only be satisfied with his death. So he made up the tale that he's the ghost of Iki. As he puts it, as the ghost, he can inspire the locals, he can rob the lowlifes blind, and he can buy his way to the mainland. Despite the clear disappointment, Jin is somewhat satisfied at knowing that the imposter of the ghost is Kenji. 
He would tell Kenji to cut off the ghost act and he was going to leave him to deal with the mess he created for himself until Kenji asked if leaving him is something the ghost would do. Compelled to help out his imposter, Jin would escort Kenji to his camp where he would take a personal interest in Kenji's problems now. As it turns out, Kenji owes a small fortune to a notorious smuggler named the Viper. Even on a completely isolated island, Kenji is still managing to get involved with the worst of the worst. As Kenji owes a small fortune to this notorious smuggler who himself has managed to evade capture from Lord Shimoda for over 20 years. A marvelous feat, Jin was curious how he managed to do, so he would accompany Kenji to go and meet the Viper. Now you can decide to do the Viper or just negotiate some type of settlement. Whatever the outcome, Jin would manage to bring the amount of money Kenji owes the Viper down and even secure him a seat on the boat to the mainland Japan, provided he recovers the Viper's stolen navigation charts that are now in Mongol hands. Jin would manage to secure the navigational charts by himself as Kenji is not a fighter, but it's worth noting that on the way to face the Mongols, Kenji does propose a plan. Perhaps he can rest. And Jin, along with the help of Fugu, a local fisherman who was convinced by Kenji that Kenji's the real ghost can go and take on the Mongols together. This doesn't really go all that far, but Jin does scold Kenji for using people and he says that if he wants to be more like the ghost, he has to find other ways to helping people. It's a small, humble message that sticks with him. As when Jin and Kenji return to the Viper with his navigational charts, Kenji would give up his seat for Fugu, telling him that he's earned his spot on the ship and take his opportunity to escape the war-ravaged islands. Kenji would then look at Jin and tell him that he can scrape by, but he didn't like the odds of Fugu. He wasn't a warrior after all, he was nothing but a humble fisherman. If Kenji can deal with escaping Gon the Butcher, Red Hands Haro, and now the Viper, then he'll be alright on this island, especially with Jin by his side. 